everyone, it's Robin. I have a couple of uh, crisscross cards to share with you today. I've seen them popping up again on YouTube, and I decided to go ahead and make some. It's been a little while since I've made one. Uh, probably, I'm going to say at least six months, maybe even close to a year. But I saw one recently. I think it was Laura. I know it was Laura from Robin Laura, who's a brand new designer for Wild Orchid Crafts. I'm so excited about that. So uh, be sure and check out her channel. She does a fantastic job. And uh, so anyway it just inspired me to go ahead and make one again and um, for those of you that are new to crisscross cards or are not sure how to make them I will have a tutorial just kind of basic construction tutorial for how to make this size card six by six um, at the end of this video so be sure and stay tuned well stay tuned anyway uh, but let me go ahead and share with you what I did I made a couple of winter cards I don't have a sentiment on here because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them yet uh, it may be what I thought of a couple ideas not that I'm trying to rush winter because I'm I was telling my husband this morning I'm really not ready for winter and you know you see the our yard needs raked and it just it looks like a cold dreary morning this morning and uh, so I was just telling him I'm really not ready to see the snow flying and um, but I know it's coming so I was thinking all that to say I was thinking about sending this when the first snow falls uh, sending this to our daughter who's away at college uh, but I don't know. I have a couple of cards. I'll show you the other one in a minute. It's not done, but I'll show you anyway. Um, but it may be a, a winter birthday card. It could be a Christmas card. I uh, just haven't decided. So let me go ahead and show you this cute little image. Uh, this is a digi image. Sylvia Zett is the designer. She is a UK designer and does a fabulous job. She's so cute. And uh, for those of you that are new, newer, uh, this puffiness is called liquid applique and it comes in a liquid form and you just kind of squeeze it on, well you don't kind of squeeze it on, you squeeze it on really thin and then what I do is I'll sprinkle glitter on it um, and then you'll use your heat tool like your embossing tool and then heat it just until it starts to puff up and you'll know uh, you don't want to overheat it or it can burn uh, and then you get this cute little snow effect so and you can just pick that stuff up at uh, I know Joann's has it because that's where I got it and it lasts forever. I've had it for a couple years. Uh, so just, just your little quick tip there. And then I colored the uh, image itself really, really light so as not to compete with the uh, bold colors of the pattern paper. And let me go ahead and show you the pattern paper that I used. It's an older one that I have not used because I've been hoarding it. I love it. I would love to get my hands on this 12 by 12 someday. But it came out in 2009, so I know it's probably the chances of me finding it are very slim. But it's basic gray Eskimo Kisses, and probably, I'm going to say my top five favorite Christmas collections of all time for two pattern papers in here in particular. I love, I'm going to show you just really quick. This one, I love it. There's something about these images that just, I don't know, warm my heart. I love them. And then this one here with these cute little deer. I absolutely love this paper so I've had this for years and I've just now decided to let go of some of it by not hoarding it so why do we do that I don't know it's just paper but I love those um, those two in particular but um, this is the first I've used of that paper pad all that to say getting way off track but uh, so these are the embellishments on the front chunky but I love it and obviously this is gonna have to go in a box or um, padded envelope or package or, of some sort but that's it I mean how fun is this to get in the mail right um, it just shows somebody I cared enough and this is almost a present in itself uh, but I've gone ahead and added diamond stickles on the trellis rose uh, all this is from Wild Orchid Crafts as you know I'm sure <laughs> from watching my channel uh, this is an MFT swirl these are the buttons from uh, Hobby Lobby uh, some pearl from Hobby Lobby and then this liquid pearls here uh, I didn't explain that and then I've just chalked around the edges um, again more lace from other crafts and then um, you can see the crisscross right here the angle and then it just pulls out and again no sentiment inside because I don't know what I'm going to do with it so that is the uh, first card I like that pattern paper as well so that just slides back in and I'm going to try and do that upside down and it's probably not going to work very well so it just sticks down in there like that so first card and while I'm on the winter theme this is the one that's not done but I'll show you the cute little stamp is she cute 
they just have such sweet little faces. And I added the diamond stickles to her little fairy wings and glossy accents to the holly and her little hair flower bows. So, really cute. So, and then this has Webster's Pages trim. So that's as far as that one has gotten so far. And then, um, you can see the pattern paper behind there. It goes really good with the Webster's Pages trim. So there's that one. And then I made an anniversary card that you've seen sitting here. And these are, this is for some very good friends of ours who celebrated 37 years of marital bliss yesterday. I'm late getting this to them. But I didn't see them yesterday, so, um, yeah. I feel bad about it, but it's okay. I'll see them in a day, a couple days. So these are the flowers again. And then I added a Martha Stewart butterfly punch. And this stamp, uh, the others were digis, so I don't have anything to show you for that. But this one I can actually show you. Um, let me show you a close-up of that. I paper pieced her little dress. And the Stampin' Up stamps on there. Give you a close-up of the flowers. And this paper collection is Prima Anna Lee. And let me show you the stamp. You're not going to see it very good in here because it's in the little bag, but I can show you where it's from. It's a Lily of the Valley stamp, and the website there is lilyofthevalley.co.uk. There's no name on here, so I can't tell you. Maybe it's just called together forever. I don't know. But let me go ahead and show you the insert. Um, I cut out the sentiment using shimmery white cardstock, the same that I used to cut out the swirls from MFT, this one here. And it just, um, and then I stamped it with Timber Brown Stays On because it's shimmery. I wanted to make sure that it wouldn't smear. It says, May your day be filled with sunshine and laughter. And I think I said, maybe on another card, that I used diamond stickles on all of the uh, flowers and the butterfly, the Martha Stewart butterflies. So those are my three easel cards. And uh, if you stick around, I will be sharing with you how to. Um, create the base for that easel card or easel cards crisscross cards so stick around for that thank you so so much for watching i always appreciate it appreciate your comments and just your kind words and your encouragement it really is an encouragement to me i appreciate it so so much so i will see you again in the next video thanks for watching bye bye okay so what you're going to need is a 12 by 12 piece of paper i'm just going to show you a six by six card now you can adjust this it doesn't have to be a six by six card you just adjust it accordingly if you wanted a five and a half square card you'd have an 11 inch um a, you know eight and a half or five and a half by 11 inch piece of card stock actually you'd need two of them i hope that made sense okay so get your paper trimmer and there goes my other one um, i'm not gonna worry about it right now so you're just gonna let me see if i can make sure i get the whole trimmer in here uh, and then it. <laughs> okay, so you're going to cut this in half at six inches. So you're going to have two pieces at six by 12 inches. And then I'm going to set this, oops, sorry, get this out of the way for a second. And I'm going to score both of them at six inches. Again, this is for a six inch square card. Okay, I'm scoring twice because I have thick textured cardstock. Okay. <clears throat> so basically what we need to do, well, let me just go ahead and make my folds. What we're going to do is these two pieces are going to go together, the backs of them. So what we need to do is uh, take off this part here, the top part of both of these. So let me just go ahead and make a mark with pencil. We're going to cut off from here, this side right here, from the score line. Let me make sure I'm on screen. From the score line here to this corner, this top part of this side. And then I'm just making these marks for you guys so you can see what I'm doing because I'm white on white. So you don't have to do this when you do yours. So then I'm going to do it from this score line here. From my score lines, so you're always going to do, go from the score line down to the bottom here. And then you're going to cut off this part. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I didn't make the line because I don't trust myself to do it straight. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So let's go ahead and let me get my trimmer in here and I'll do it sideways. Oops, sorry for the banging again. I shouldn't have probably put it underneath my trim or my camera. All right, so I have this sideways so I can stay in screen. So now that I have this marked, you guys hopefully can see it. All I'm going to do is put this corner to this corner at the score line on the track for my trimmer. Okay, and I'm going to do that just by kind of lining it up visually. And I'm going to try and do this without getting my head in the under my camera. Okay. Oops, I almost did it wrong. <laughs> Remember, go from the top corner down to the bottom. Good thing I marked it. Because I'm trying to do this sideways and upside down. Recipe for almost disaster. Okay. Okay, so this part you can just throw away or you can use this to stamp sentiments on. But you're not going to need it for the card. I didn't do that quite perfectly, but you'll get the idea. So you can see here, this is the left side of our card. Now we need to make the right side of the card. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line this up, the score line, to the corner edge of the card. And hopefully I have that on track better than the last one. Okay, again, you don't need this piece. So let me go ahead and get my trimmer out of the way. Alright, now you can see how this is just going to come together. And I just use ATG tape to adhere this. So here is your crisscross part. And then all you're going to do is just add ATG tape right along here. And I don't know who is the originator of this tutorial. I heard somebody mention years ago that they saw it on Split Coast Stampers. So um, I know I saw it years and years ago. Somebody, I think it was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator had shared it. I, I really don't remember. It's been that long ago. But they've been around the block a long time. So they're fun to make. It's not something I would mass produce because it does use a lot of paper. But, you know, for a special occasion or something, I think they're fantastic. So here's basically what your card looks like now. Okay. And then um, I would do your embellishing. Like you're going to put paper partway down on this back paper. At least, you know, I would recommend it. And then you're going to put, you know, some paper here. And then once you do, you're going to attach, you know, adhere liquid glue here. And then that will fold down to create this you know pocket and then you're gonna add some liquid glue here and then fold that over and then you have your pocket here so and then you just add um, for this to decorate um, these parts here this and this you would just take a six by six piece of designer paper and just cut it in half diagonal that's all that is so anyway I hope that that's been helpful for you um, I hope that you'll give one of these a try. They're a lot of fun. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my cards. And uh, if you have, I hope that you'll consider giving it a thumbs up. So as always, I will see you again soon in the next video, probably with an autumn project. <laughs> I'm not promising, but uh, that is the plan. I do have an anniversary card I need to make, so that may be it. I don't know. So anyway, I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.